So welcome back to the third part of the Briggs Klein Lectures by uh, Professor Collard. Thank you. So again, uh, for summary of the six lectures, we have a third one, the characterization of stable family. And so, and so, I remind you the definition of stable variety that we developed in the previous lecture. That there should be demi normal, which means that the co-dimension one should have had adverse nodes, and then it should satisfy second condition has to. So just a little weakening of second condition for normality, because you because you smooth this in co-dimension one, but um, here we my master well known. Then it has semi low canonical singularities, and for, and if you'd like to just keep a handful of examples in your mind, and probably call go where Calabia, who's are, are, are a fairly good example. And it should be a projective variety, and this omega x should be ample. Example is, whereby omega x is. Not assumed to be locally free, but locally free in, in co dimension one. So when I say ample, I assume that, that some tensor power of it, if I take it to flat C part, that's a line bundle and, and, and that's ample. So, so I, and so to, so to the fact that I have to take a, Take a power of omega x or a multiple of the canonical class, that's a, uh, that leads to various complications that we have to deal with in this, in this theory. Now, and so, so we had an example yesterday that we constructed a surface that had two singularities of the form C2, uh, taking the portion uh, by cyclic group of order. For acting multiplication by i or just both coordinates. And so the, then the quotient, you see the canonical class is not Cartier, but two times it is it's Cartier, so it's really not too bad. And the surface had an ample canonical class, and we constructed uh, two flat smoothings. And so the smoothing on the right hand side, but that was a good old surface. With ample canonical class and k squared equals one. So that's good. Basically, something like this is that we want to deal with in our, 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 our moduli theory. So this S0 this should appear at the boundary of our, 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 our moduli space. But then there was another smooth thing, which was a K3 surface blown up just at one point. And you notice this K3 surface can even be a, a non algebraic K3 surface. So, certainly this side we do not have a, a, a moduli space. We, we do not want a moduli space that includes smooth variety, with ample canonical class, and some K3 surfaces yeah. in the same company. So, the question is to understand what distinguishes the the, the two sides and how to make distinction systematic and end up with some reasonable theory that sort of one deformation is allowed and the other deformation is not. So we go just for notation, I use this bracket power, that means I take the tensor power and the reflexive power. Since omega x is not locally free, it's tensor power, you can have torsion and it will not be free, but sometimes it can happen that the reflexive power of it is in, 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 in fact the line bundle, and these are the cases that I will be interested in. Okay, and so now that here comes the main theorem. Well, <coughs> the first theorem, it sort of picks out the deformations that we like. Okay, so the, these are the deformations that we like, uh, at least over started and the base easily used. Okay, so, so the, the general theory here 
is that that you start to understand sort of what happens over say over say deformations over smooth curves, okay? And so then you prove maybe various equivalent land properties and then you start to see well which of these makes sense over an arbitrary base and so the which is uh, maybe the strongest over an arc over an arbitrary base and then try to to in, in, to impose that. And so okay so unfortunately it seems that uh, oh yes no. and so so I have a flat proper morphism with stable fibers and so as you see this is uh, may not be exactly what we want. So, so if you go by curves, then, then a good family of stable curves is just a, just a flat proper morphism whose fibers are stable curves. But what we have seen that in, that in higher dimensions we need something else. And so then we want to understand what is this something else that we need. And so here are the equivalent conditions. One is that the volume, so the self-intersection of the canonical class of the fiber is locally constant. So although the canonical class is not Cartier, some multiple of it is Cartier, and I know how to intersect Cartier divisor. But this means that this would be a rational number, okay? So, so if it's Kx is Cartier, then it's a positive integer. But if only some multiple is Cartier, then it's a positive rational number, which which will cause various headaches later. Okay, now then the other property that all, all the plurigen general they are locally constant. Okay. And those, so, so, so far these are, these are really properties that do, uh, that do not see the nilpotent directions in the base. I don't have them here, but, but the, the generalization. But now here we get into something that, that sort of should work over an arbitrary very base that these sheaves that might take a relative omega x as m spot x, these are flat and commute with base changes. Okay? So now this is something that, that makes sense over an arbitrary base. And then so four is a special case of, of three basically when I want to look at base changes so that, 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 that just the point is included inside x. And so we sort of that's okay, then then that everything is fine. So so but let's see that these these four are equivalent. So in the next few minutes I want to to, to spend on this. And so, so oh, I will try to recall the statements as we go along. Okay, and and then so in in in, in fact you will see the 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 proof that that and uh, for sort of a lot of it, we don't really uh, need low canonical singularities. That, that so, so the, if you want a version of it for not for all m, but for sufficiently divisible m, then it's enough that uh, <coughs> the fiber satisfies Serre's condition. <laughs> the omega x is locally free in co dimension one, and then its power is locally free and ample for some m maps, which in principle might depend. On, on, on so, so these are, are so, so, so in, 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 in some sense it says that this theorem has not much to do with semi canonical singularities, but, but it, it, it is very important. Okay, so it is clear that if that, that if the property is three holds, so this is flat and commutes with base change, then, then so that. So base changes to the point gives the property four. So three implies four. That's just just completely obvious. Now let's say say four implies two. And so let's assume that these these form a flat family. But this definitely implies that the Euler characteristic is a locally constant. Okay. Uh, now. Then we would, we would like to get to H0 from the Euler characteristic. Now, mm -hmm. since omega x says they are, are assumed ample, if, 
If the semi is sufficiently large, then uh, it's equally devoted by the servant. So, so, so here we don't know anything thing about it. Uh, we do not need to know anything about the singularity because in the servant. Now, if the if the fibers have not two bad singularities, then you see this should hold basically by Kodaira's vanishing singularity. So as soon as m is at least two, then it's it's basically omega plus something ample because I assume that omega is m. Now uh, there are some complications here because of the singularities. So so for instance, the standard Kawamata feedback vanishing is not strong enough for this, but 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 so basically if you you so sort of try to sort of push Kodaira vanishing in the theorem here, and it was done by Ombro and, 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 and Fujino, but so this is basically just a soup that the, the singular version of Kodaira's vanishing theorem that holds for M at least. And now I will come back to them because one case in the lecture. Okay. And so this was four implies two. Now let's say Say two implies three, and so so the two is the assumption that these are locally constant. Now, if this is locally free, then the small m plus r capital M's power, I can write it as m's power tensor with the r's power of this, and this is m. Okay? And so now this says that the Hilbert polynomial of this is independent of x. Again, for large enough m. The A0 is the same as the order characteristic. And then you can find this statement in our turn that if the Hilbert <coughs> polynomial is independent, uh, then the sheet is sort of flat over everything. Okay? And so so that's that's fine. So we have here two implies three. Uh, now two implies one is another easy thing that if you just if you write uh, the down Riemann rock for this, then the self intersection of A and um, maybe this divided uh, by n factorial is the coefficient of the leading term here. So these are locally constant, and the coefficient of the leading term is also constant. And so now that the really surprising thing is that, uh, that, that the converse also holds that. So, so, you know, so for flatness, you need that the Hilbert where polynomial is actually constant. And here we are assuming only that the leading coefficient is, is constant. And what's actually quite surprising that, 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 that the constancy of the leading coefficient it implies that the whole polynomial is, is, is constant. But there, Seem to be a fair number of examples of this that that, that somewhat is Hilbert polynomial or or something like this. If you write down in in, in, in families that the only way to get a change in the Hilbert polynomial is if you actually change in the leading coefficient. But there will be another example that I will show you. Still, it is it is quite surprising and it. And it is really helpful because, because these intermediate terms in the Hilbert polynomial involving some higher top classes, especially if we have singularities, they are actually very hard to compute in practice. Okay. And so, so uh, again, there will be a general theorem here. Okay, so so okay, so I have and from a flat projective morphism with S2 fibers and base is in B. And I have a reflexive rank on sheet, which is lo locally free in codimension one in each, you know, each fiber. And so then I want to apply this to, to, to the relative omega or some power of it. Okay? And now I assume that if I take this L and restrict it to the fiber and take this WL, then this is locally free. And and M. Now you 
might say it's a bag on earth to have five examples like that. The next slide will give you some examples that these actually do come up fairly naturally. And so then the claim is that the volume function is not pressing continuous. And it's locally constant if and only if the shift is actually. And so now we will apply this to this power of omega systems that all of these are, are locally fixed. So then now this will take care of all sufficient divisible powers. We will come back to the other values again of actual Okay, but I mean already for sort of sufficiently divisible power, this is surprising. So then then uh, that is, so where can you find these things? So it, it, it's probably even um, more surprising if you think about it as a family of, of divisors. So the over one parameter uh, base as a family of divisors, there's Cartier on the generic fiber, Cartier on the special fiber, but not Cartier. Okay? So it's a little bit tricky, but, but in fact, I mean, the Simplest example that you hit some, some similarities. And so you see the special fiber is x phi minus u square, it's just a quadric cone. And then I add that t square v square to it, so general, general fiber here is a smooth quadric. Okay. And uh, now what I do here that that I take this thing, and so on on so these are two lines, and then the generic fiber <coughs> has two lines are disjoint as a quadric cone. I have these two families of lines, I take two disjoint lines. But when I specialize it in, well, on the cone, all lines pass through the vertex. And so you see right away that this is something that's not Cartier at the vertex when they, they, they meet up. But of course, on the generic fiber, the generic fiber is smooth, so this divisor there is Cartier. And in the special fiber, I have a quadric cone and two lines that is exactly a quadric cone intersected with the plane. So that means it's again Cartier. And you can compute the intersection numbers. And the generic fiber, of course, you have zero. I mean, lines in the same family, they can be moved to be disjoint. And in the special fiber, you just the degree of the quadric. Now, these are not ample. So before I had ample, you know, let's add the hyperplane class to it. Then we will have degree eight in the special fiber, degree six in the generic fiber. And, and so we see that there is this, uh, this jump. And so, blah, 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 blah. but the claim is that every time this, that, 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 if, the, that if the intersection number that I have is constant, that forces the family to be Actually, well, let's see if we can we can prove this at least for surfaces. And for the surfaces, it just it is it is surprisingly easy. So then I have this sheaf and I restrict it to the special fiber. Well, it's Cartier. It's as locally free outside. It's at like finitely many points. So when I take its reflexive hull. This map is an isomorphism except at, at those finitely many, many points where this is, where this is not locally. Now this means that if I compute the other characteristic of this, uh, well, so then, uh, so, okay, so maybe I should have have said that the order characteristic of this is larger or equal than the order characteristic of L restricted to the special fiber. And now that there, uh, because, because I just add something positive because of the zero dimension now. And then I just use the upper semi continuity. But in the generic fiber, of course, the reflexive power is the same as, as that. Okay, so that means that the other characteristic it can only go up. Now let's write down Riemann drop on so the both sides. So we assume that this is locally free and LG is locally free. So standard Riemann drop works. And I get this in the point. And you see the, the, the leading term. So leading term here must be larger than the leading term here. Okay, so 
they, they, they don't have the inequality. That's that is not particularly surprising. Now, what happens if these two terms are equal? Well, then the next terms take over. Okay. So then the next term takes over, and then I I get this inequality. Okay. And now, if you know about negative numbers. Then this is really remarkable because for positive numbers it goes B0 larger equal BG, but for negative numbers, which I can have, it goes the other. Okay. So it is really a sort of a weird coincidence. And in, in fact, you can play this game in any even dimension. That if the leading terms are the same, then the next terms have to be equal. You can't play this game in all dimensions. So in dimension three, you cannot play the, the game because there would be some squares here. So you can so uh, but I mean, still you know, I just could not believe that so when I found this and then I saw that it works in even dimension, I just could not believe that, that sort of something thing does not work out in another you know, that dimension. Now it was was actually quite hard to to do that, but 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 and so the, we were almost there, there, uh, there long ago. So if you, if you think back at the local uh, and so the local version of Fashat theorem, the Dalton equation, and it says that if you you have a, a SpaceX and you have a divisor here, then the uh, in the nearer point is local version, then the theta group of of this local scheme x minus the close point, it injects into the, the Picard group here, but if the depths of the central fiber is at least C. Okay. Now, unfortunately, we have the, the problem <coughs> that even if we have a family of three folds, because it can be log canonical that that sometimes they are not comacoli, so we can only guarantee that the depth is at least And so then I sort of started believing that we that I can do better than Kotan. That's a, a sort of it took me some time to believe that we actually overlooked something, but, but it seems there was something that we overlooked. And so that it's enough I mean if the depth is is at least two, which is just says as two conditions. So that's sort of basically very cheap to achieve. But the dimension has to be at least two. And now I could sort of prove the, the semi-log canonical case, but then sort of the really nice argument, and I hope you have seen it by Bach and De Jong, it's a very nice reduction to characteristic P and a lifting back. So it's a very tricky <laughs> argument. Uh, and so by now I, I think the statement will need is included in, in sort the of text part of the theoretics. And so, so, uh, so, that means that the higher dimensions they are okay, but but it, it, it is not that trivial argument that that, that works for surfaces. That something um, um, something more complicated. Okay, and now so so this completes the proof of of four equivalents of this, and I just would like to mention another there's. Statement here. So this proof is completely independent of this, but it was, well, the statement was very much motivated by this. So, and here I I ask myself. So I start with a, with some kind of big R divisor, and then and then you know I can compute this H zero. So since it's R, I have to round down, and then it's an integral divisor. So then and the sheet makes sense, and then. Well, of course, if I subtract something that's effective, then it's less than or equal. Yeah, there are all these sort of fewer er, er, sections here. And now, well, then, they say, how can you make this actually smaller? Yeah? And so, sort of, one thing is that, uh, well, you can ask that uh, you have an equality for sort of all of them. And the other just just an equality of the leading terms of the border, and it says that these are in fact the same. That if you subtract any 
And the only way to lose sections for this one value of m is in fact if you that you lose a huge number of sections that the volume actually drops. Okay? So that's again the surprising in statement. So of course the leading in term it does not tell you the rest of this Hilbert function, but somehow the only way to get a smaller Hilbert function is that you actually drop the volume. So so um Okay, and so now, so, so and based on this, we can, de we can define stable morphisms. So these will be the right analogs of, of the flat families of stable curves. That it should be, will be flat projective with stable fiber. So this is what we expected from curves. This is not much, but then we need to add this other condition that the older relative utilizing sheep and, and as far as they are flat and commutative based. Okay? So then this will be the definition. Okay. And so then there is the thesis that this gives the right definition of, 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 of families of, of stable variety in higher dimensions. Now I, I, so, so if you, you, you survive to lecture six, then, then you will see that that this has problems in characteristic P. This actually came as a, as a big surprise to me, maybe not two years ago, or I don't know, something like that. I assumed until then that this definition works also in characteristic P. So, but, uh, but this in this works for surfaces in, 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 in characteristic P, the, the work of George Patrick we started this, and so, so, but, but something thing was wrong with three folds, which starting with three folds and characteristic P, which, which at least I don't understand. So I hope that someone here will actually come up with the right definition. Okay, now there is a small terminology. So, so I like to refer to this moduli space and this notion as KSB stable, the KSB moduli space, and I use the and that I had Alexei Moon, but there are pairs. But some people could use KSB8 for this as well. So, so whatever. I, I, I don't care. But if you see this, then, then so, so, at least in my book, I keep this distinction, but others. I have not said much about the boundary case yet. Mean, I will discuss this more in the fifth lecture. So, what? <coughs> So what to do when there is a boundary divisor and why that it's actually uh, that there are some sort of new <coughs> new difficulties to to, to, to to get the right definition. Okay, any questions? Yes. Hmm? Well, Okay, okay. So, okay. So, so you see that if the base is not reduced, then the, then the first two conditions they say nothing about the nilpotent direction. Okay. So that means means there really cannot be equivalent. So, for instance, when R in scheme, there's only one point, so you know, being locally constant is just constant. Make, make sense. And so, so, uh, my, 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 my philosophy is that I, that I try to prove equivalent statements over reduced bases. And then I hope that one of them, that makes sense over arbitrary bases and it implies the rest. Okay? And so here, uh, if I know that this is flat and commute, it's a base change, then maybe I can do the first base change to, the reduce scheme, okay, and now then this theorem takes over, okay, but but yeah, so 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 in, in in some sense this is in my mind that I want, but this is not something that works over Arkin scheme. So I try to find a, a a more complicated statement that that 
the works over art in scheme, and implies the rest. Any other questions? What, what are the similarities of the total space X and the Okay, so we, well, and so I have no assumption, but uh, should have stable fiber. So the fibers have semi local on the cusp. And so, oh, so X doesn't have some local singularities because it's S is just reduced, so you can have pretty bad singularities. But 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 the, but I mean, you know, the, 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 the same thing for families of, of nodal curve. If you are over a complicated base, then the total space, the singularities reflect whatever whatever singularities you have in the base, yeah. And but the new singularities is. From, from the fibers and they have to be sent it Okay. Oh. Okay. And so, oh, okay. So now, now we have a definition, okay, of uh, what a good family of stable varieties is. Now we have to prove that it's a reasonable definition. Okay. And so, and so again, for sort of curves, it is easy. So, so for instance, if there is a proper morphism, then the set of fibers that are curves with nodes, it is open. Okay. And so that means you don't need to, to say anything else. You can throw away all the others and, and you are happy. Okay. And but well, will this happen for stable? And so, but there's a general question here. So pick some property. I mean, the one I'm most interested in is being <coughs> stable. And then there's a flat proper morphism. Well, then you ask yourself, but well, well, look at all the fibers that satisfy this property. But well, is this an open condition or a closed condition? Or, 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 or what can I say? Now, there are some cases, so it's it, it, it rarely restated this way, but, uh, the, but, but you think back of, back of various studies, then, for example, you say that being geometrically, the reduced the normal is an open condition, an allocated group that having rational singularity is an open condition. For canonical singularities, it was a, it was a bit hard, harder than the main step was done by Kahn. Okay. Uh, but it turns out that being semi log canonical or being stable, they are not open canonical. And so then, then, then what? So, what can we do with them? Well, so then how bad are they? Okay, and so let's start with uh, uh, the bad example so of what can go wrong in general. So, I start with the smooth curve A. Of G not G and the line bundle of the V 2G minus 2. It's probably easiest if you assume it's variable, but the, the definitions will, will make sense. So, 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 so just assume that it's variable. Uh, and now um, that I can take the corner, so I can take this curve, I embed it in this variable line bundle, <coughs> and then, then I can take the corner over it. Now, here is a definition that does not assume that L. Is, is, is very important. So in fact, in general, this, this is the right definition of, of, of the, 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 the code over something with some ample line body. Now, okay, and so then I get this singularity, and so what is the class group at the vertex? Well, so you know, that you think of the resolution, then, then there is the curve. So, you think of the, so, you see, and so I have the cone here, and if I resolve it, so here I have my curve A, A and it's just an A bond bundle. And so that means the class group here, it is just a Picard group of A. And then now then the only thing changes uh, that the normal bundle here gets killed. Okay? 
So when you go down, and the class group of group of the vertex is exactly the Picard group of the on the curve quotient is out by the subgroup generated by now. So then I asked myself, when is the canonical class Carty or or Q Carty? And so I have to, to correct for this L. Now this is 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 something that has degree zero. And if this is trivial, then the canonical class is Cartier. You see that the multiple can come by this L. Okay, and so that means that Cartier only when this L is exactly the, the, the omega A. But every time this is torsion, the canonical class will uh, be Q Cartier. And so this means that if I think of this as, as the family of singularities over where this component of the P car group. So it's a nice flat family of cones. And if you look at the canonical class of the fiber, then they become Q Cartier over the discrete set of torsion points, but these are discrete. So and and you see here our problem is really this this Q Cartier condition that if if uh, we could live with Cartier canonical divisor, then this would be fine. I just get one point. But because I have this Q Cartier, and sort of, then here suddenly this Q Cartier condition is not algebraic. Then, then, now I, it, 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 it gives me an infinite discrete set. So that's uh, that would be really bad for us. Now. Luckily, these are these are not log canonical. Yes, so, so you get something log canonical if you have a cone over color B out. So of course, there are elliptic curves, but Q minus two is not ample. So in fact, it's just a constant map. So so this means that that so the cones over elliptic curves, which which are in fact log canonical, just that's sort of it seems just by luck they escape. Uh, they escape this kind of counter example. And in, in, in fact, it uses quite a lot to, to prove that sort of this kind of problem does not occur for for uh, for low canonical uh, in angularity. So it's actually quite uh, tricky proof using Simpson's work on coma as a jump to side. Uh, so the lecture uses this quite a lot. Okay, and so then the main statement is that stability is at least representable. So that if I have a flat proper morphism over a field of characteristic zero, and as soon as the fibers are at worst nodal in co dimension one. So, um, and so then, well, it turns out stability is, it is not an open condition, uh, but it is representable, okay? So that means that there's a monomorphism, and you think of, of, of monomorphism as an injection, then, then you're not too far off, okay? Such that if I have an arbitrary P2S, then the pullback is stable if and only if the G factor is too isolated. Okay. Um, and so now again, instead of a proof, I will give you an example of how this can work in practice, in in, in some example. So I will start with the local where the singularities are right, but, but the canonical class is not yet helpful. So I just I, I I have this two by three matrix, and the condition is that the rank of it should be less than or equal one. So <coughs> that means that the three, that the three two by two, 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 two subdeterminants they vanish. So, and now my claim is that the following equivalent, so the fiber is semi-log canonical. Yeah? So here, in fact, it, 
do mais perto da esquerda aqui. E vou dizer para não me esfriar do que não me tem classes aqui. Mas eu estou aqui com os caras da Brasa, que são de origem e fora das duas coordenadas. E então, isso é um local que é muito próximo. E então, o que vai acontecer é que o monomorfismo that I have, of course, I have to sort of tear out the origin. I, I just have it as an isolated point, and I have to have, have a complement of the coordinate axis, and I just map it down. So, it's, so it has to factor your through this, okay? And so in particular, that if you take a, take a line through the origin, then there, the fibers are always semi-local, but that's not stable, because that will not, not factor through if I tear out the origin. So, so, so there is this thing I have to see. So let's see if I can can do this. So, but in S and D are both non-zero. Then of course I, I can I can change coordinates that I have this, and I hope everybody recognizes that that it, that it is just P one plus P two. So you can think here is the P one, here is the is the P two. It's just that the right. Uh, down the z-grain bending, then, then you get this. Okay, now the other easy case is S and T are, are zero, then of course this is the this is the same as this, so I have all, all, all the variable zero to three, and then we know that this, that this is the rational normal curve, so T goes to one T, T squared, T cubed. Okay, so, so that's, that's how you get this equation, and then well, of course, these, these two variables just go for the right, which means I have to take the cone right. So, you know, the vertex of the cone is a line, and the singularity along it is, of course, of the, uh, the C3 multi-section. Okay? So, that means these are just quotient singularities. Uh, and now, what happens at the other cases? Well, I mean, they are symmetrical, so let's assume that t is non-zero, and then I get the. Now this is probably harder to, 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 to recognize, but this is. But, but the cone over the F1, this is sort of standard root surface in bending, okay? And so, so it has degree 4. Now you see this F1 is final, okay? So, and you know, I have been saying that the cone over where Pano has, has low canonical in, in fact, low terminal singularities, but this holds if, if I embed with that multiple of the canonical class. And here this embedding is not, uh, by a multiple of the canonical class. So here minus kf is not proportional to the hyperplane class, which means, means that the that I have this cone that the canonical class no multiple of it is right. Okay? And so, so that's the, the problem that we are encountering here that, that suddenly this current TA condition gets violated. Okay, so uh, now then, uh, well, so as I said, I mean, here the, the Canonical class is not ample, and the generic phi varies to just p1 plus p2. But it's very easy to, to to fix it. I just take a degree m ramified cover um, along the hypersurface of degree m. So I add sort of one more variable. So here I'm I, I'm summing to six. So there's one more variable, and then you have the only thing I need. You need to check that the canonical class becomes the ample where I want it. And so, then for m at least 5, uh, I have the stability holds at the origin and outside the coordinate classes. Okay? So, so uh, then you contemplate sort of these two sets of examples a, a, a bit, then you will end up with a, with a proof that stability is in. Fact at least represented. Any questions? 
when you pull back uh, yeah. along the lines, that's in true geology, yes. you get actually a family of stable uh, variety. And the so, I mean, then I get a flat the family mm -hmm. where all the fibers are stable, but not the family stable. itself is not okay. stable. Okay, so there is this extra property okay. of, of, of the powers of omega and so the dense fragments. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so, we just have to accept that so just because it is flat and all the fibers are nice, it is not good enough in higher dimensions. We need to add something. Any other question? Okay, so then, so, uh, basically now we have all the pieces together to, so we get the, the main existence then theorem that if you, you, you fix n and b and you look, you look at n dimensional uh, uh, stable varieties where the volume that's the self intersection of the denominator class is v, uh, then, uh, then there's a building uh, Mumford stack uh, and, and it has a projective course moduli space. Well, so maybe the existence of, of moduli space is so really easy, so I mean, it, 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 it's a by standard method as an algebraic space, the project. I haven't said anything about it. Okay, and then, so its modular properties are as good as for, for MG, the stack, or the moduli space, but as a scheme, it can be much more complicated. So, so there is this, this, uh, this uh, problem here that it's frequently very messy, though uh, actually in so many examples that have been brought out of these spaces and not uh, quite that. So, so Alexei and Pardini actually brought out some cases of by low surfaces and others, but there are very few cases where these spaces have really been you know, adequately described. So, so far, this is more an existence theorem. I mean, even, uh, yeah. Um, okay, so let's see here. So, this has a long history. So, so at least the existence and, and, and sort of you know, so what are, are stable varieties and so what are stable uh, morphism. It's my, it's my old paper with Shepard Brown. Um, then the fact that the components, they are finite type, that was, that was, that, 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 that was too bad, that, that, by Alexei, I will we'll say a few words about what, why this is actually very hard to do. Uh, and then, and then, then Bakil's paper, where it says that already for surfaces, the local structure is arbitrary, uh, bad in the interior. So it's already for smooth surfaces with ample canonical, Class, the local structure of these moduli spaces can be arbitrary. Uh, in the higher dimensions of the existence is, you can need a finite type. So, so again, I will, will say something more about the, about the finite <coughs> type and, and the projectivity. Is, so, in the case that we are using, was done by Fujino and then in, in the boundary divisor. It's Kovacs, but probably, and so the, so the, so for some reason with Fujino paper, it was going back and forth with the referee for five years. So in fact, it's a much earlier uh, uh, paper. But in Anna's uh, sometimes takes its it, its time. I am not an editor there, so don't blame, <laughs> <laughs> don't blame me for anything. Okay, so I just want to touch on a few points here. The one is by is finite type R. And so, so let's say that you have a stable curve of genus G and you want to, so the, for the smooth curve of genus G and you want to understand its degeneration. And so that's a stable curve of genus G. And then, so that means that 
that so 2g minus 2 that's the degree of omega c which you which you can compute component wise now in each component i have a line bundle which is m4 so the degree is at least one so then i see right away that the number of <coughs> components is uh, uh, most 2g minus 2. So that means, you know, I can see if I understand the lower genus cases at most 2g minus 2. So two have to come together. So, so, and, and this is reasonable that the boundary is under fairly strong control. Now, what happens if I have a stable surface? Now, it's probably better to think, I mean, already for the Probably it would have been better if I used the normalization so for components of self intersection, but, 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 but here it doesn't matter too much. It sort of matters more here, and so let's look at the normalizations of the component. So when I pull back the canonical class, of course, I have the expected formula in the canonical class past the divisor that comes from the nodes, okay? So then to compute the self-intersection, well, this is what I sort of fix, and that's the sum of, of what I compute each component. And then, well, what comes here? I see, and I only know that some multiple of these canonical classes start here. So that means all I can say that this is at most one divided by a mi squared. Okay? But now I just I have a positive. Now, but this is, is what is an integer, okay? And this is at most the sum of this one over mi squared. If I don't know mi's, then I cannot even estimate the number that I have. <coughs> and now, uh, in fact, sort of the bad news is there is no, that there is no bound, the bound that works for all stable surfaces. So this just saying that mi is bounded from above, that doesn't work. Now, what does work, however, which is quite surprising, that these intersections, they can be bounded, so the south intersections, they can be bounded from below. Okay, so the directional number, as the denominator, it can be arbitrary, but the number itself cannot be arbitrarily small. Now, for surfaces, we in fact, we, in fact, we know the precise bound. It, it's sort of, Many things. So I had here a weaker bound, I think 1 over 17, 28, or, or something like that. And then uh, Alex and Liu found an example that had, had sort of this self intersection. And then and Liu and Shakura proved that, that that's in fact the extreme. Okay? So this 1 over 462 is in fact the actual. We are bound here, and so so. I mean, how do you you have some hope of so proving something like that? Well, the point is you have to to you have to focus on on this uh, this curve D, yeah. That that if you restrict everything to D, then then you just have a, a curve and various restriction, and there not much can happen. And then you sort of see how to, you know, they have this curve, how to sort of go out of it. I mean, it's a lot of, of, a lot of case analysis. And, and so, you know, I mean, as, oops, I mean, as you, you see, I mean, even just so thinking up a surface, uh, you get a non integer that's small, that's non, non trivial. Now, it was only, and so, so the way uh, Alex and Liu describe this is actually start with P2 and they told you which points to blow up and then what to, to contract. But sort of maybe it's easier to see this as a total of this example is in fact a degree 42 hypersurface in, in this way for that use. And so, so I mean, it's not that you see from here sort of what exactly happens, but, but and at least it is clear. And in uh, higher dimension, we know there's a lower bound. That's the uh, location at, at turn and shoot. But uh, there is a design effect. Okay? And then there are some examples, again, by S and Dotaro, the lower bound, bound will go 
to to uh, zero very fast. Yeah. So so uh, and now in 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 fact I write down an example which which is which sort of gives this order which you look which if you look at it the right way that's sort of the generalization of of, of this one. But well, I mean. Maybe that's the smallest, but it's <coughs> most likely hopeless to prove something like that. I don't know. Uh, but, but so, so, so that, that, so, so, so for instance, it, it means that if you want to, to look at the modulized space of good all surfaces, but of n or k squared equals one, then, so the, this says that on the boundary there can be at most 462 irreducible. So each, each fiber there has at most 462 irreducible components. And I think in practice the right number is probably two or three, but, but, <laughs> but, 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 yeah, but, but, but at least this, uh, 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 I mean, in, so no, in some sense, it gives something so much stronger because we don't know that all of these surfaces they rise as uh, the boundary components. But, but, but so that's but, okay. Well, why do we expect that? Is it, I mean, why we should look at the hypersurface and weighted projective space to achieve this minimum? Well, and so I think that. Not the right way to, to, to look at it. So, so, uh, so you see that uh, that if you have so so, so uh, that you have this surface, so the ks x plus d, okay. Then usually you start uh, you start the looking of multiple of the canonical class and and see when you are getting sections. So Hilbert. Where, where function is sort of not, well, I mean, and take some verb, but so the routine verb to actually write down the Hilbert function, okay? And so then, you know, when you see this Hilbert function, and just by looking at the function, you see that it has a generator in degree 6, 11, 14, and 21. Okay? So now that actually tells you that it is a high surface in this way. But why necessary in hypersurface? Well, surface is in a three-dimensional uh, thing, and if you use the whole algebra oh, you, to you just throw uh, the, that's an embedding. No, no, no. I mean, so, so e, you, you know, if you have well, there's a line bundle, and, and, and you know that this algebra. Of, so all the powers is generated by certain degrees, then those degrees. They give you an embedding in right. that weighted projective space. Maybe mean more than four. But we computed this. Uh, and as from the Hilbert function, yeah. you, you can compute these degrees. Yeah? Well, right, but uh, even the other example of Fetzer and are constructed in this way, taking it, I mean, working with weighted projective space. <coughs> and so, so then you know, so the, the other thing thing takes over that you know what are the varieties that we can write that okay. <laughs> <laughs> hypersurfaces, okay, and then okay, but there the bound is one. Okay. And then the next thing you can do is weighted projective space. So of course you can both it with the sections, but so it, it, it's... But there's no conceptual reason why we should look there. There is no reason whatsoever, but so they, they found, I mean, I, so, 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 so I, I think I thought I would spend a lot of time trying to, to write down examples, right? So he has several, several, several papers. I think it's the, that is served also for iteration. And he understood how to generalize these two all dimensions, and he got something that was much smaller than anything else he could write. But there is there is no earthly reason well, that I know why this should be optimal. But 
okay, I mean, up to now is on one case. It's a bit dangerous to generalize <laughs> from that, but, 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 but yeah, uh, it's already amazing. So, so, um, actually there are many cases, very similar varieties that sort of seem to live naturally in, in vented projective spaces. And so, you know, the Miles Reed had a lot of success writing down funnel varieties, trying to see how they sit in, in vented projective spaces. So, um, but I don't know any. And major theory. Well, I think I'm I'm out of time today, so that's okay. I have two extra slides, but probably I stop here. Anything about global properties of this modular mm -hmm. uh, like dimension? Uh, so uh, again, in the examples that people work out, it, it sort of sounds like rationale, or, or but but you know, I mean I, I I am sure it's just and so you know, of course as. If your main examples are hypersurfaces in vented projective spaces, then of course you get something that's rational, yeah? Yeah, and, and, and so the more complicated examples have not, well, so I suppose I can say that you can, yeah, that if I look at the, at the modular space of products of curves, yeah. And so that we understand. I, 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 it's not completely clear. I mean, you still have to, to, to check check some something. So, but but yeah. So, so basically, what you expect happens, but but it needs to be checked for the work of ID one of star. But that's so you know there the whole area dimension is over dictated uh, by what happens. With the, but, but so far, just proving projectivity was pretty hard. So I. <laughs> Yeah, but, 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 so, of course, as a normal line model that you expect to be ample, so that's proved ample, so that's, 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 that is, is, is something, but, but there's very little known. Question back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's not completely obvious, okay? But so, 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 for instance, one thing that, so then, for instance, you hope to use induction on, on, for instance, volume. Yeah, a little bit easier, but, but okay, so, so, for instance, that if you know that the, Components of the boundary, of the boundary themselves, uh, they, they said they are in a bounded family. Then you know there is a fixed M such that the, the M's power of omega x is in fact Cartier. And now, uh, once you know that there is a fixed M, M that gives you a line bundle. Then there are the, there's rather general, general, general theorems that if you have a line bundle that's ample, then you know which power of it is very ample. Okay? So then you know very ample and you, you, you have control of the degree that judges, judges the volume. So this is not exactly how the proof goes because, because the self intersection is not exactly a discrete set. Yeah? So they can have pretty much arbitrary uh, denominators. So, so you know, I mean, you can do you can, you can do induction on the integers, but not on not on the positive <laughs> rationals. So, so it is not actually that bad because if you know there's a minimal value that if there are two that means you're down at least by some. 
sa me epsilon. So it's not, not completely hopeless, but, but so that's basically the idea. Okay, so generic members of some of these components will be singular. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they uh, will have semi low canonical similarities. Yeah, it will most of them be singular, like of course, this component, but most of the components are singular. And so, uh, again, you know, the most likely, yeah, so, so, I mean, at least in a, least in a few examples that Alex Seven and others. Out, these components tend to be singular, but but I mean they can be reducible components or sometimes uh, uh, smooth, yeah. So certainly if you have products of curves, for example, different uh, genus, then the boundary is just the products of, of, of the stable curve. So you know there yeah, uh, they are not too bad. But in general, they are most likely lots of things. The deformation theory of this monomorphism, like this, this property, is that understood? Like, is there a way to understand locally the moduli? Well, and so, so uh, I don't think anyone worked out the deformation theory or of the stable thing. Except for so, so for surfaces that are in the, the interior of the monolith space, they, so or, or for instance, they have only quotient singularities. Yeah? So that, that if there are some isolated quotient singularities, now the the uh, the, 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 the deformation theory of uh, surface quotient singularities that is very complicated. There are usually a large number of irreducible components. But there's at most one component that contains the stable deformations and then and, and this component is smooth. So somehow at, at, at least this extra condition that we impose that, that, that simplifies the local deformation in theory in a normal state. I I don't think anything has been worked out in dimensions. How do you how do you show projectivity? Like is there a, is there a line bundle? Uh, and so it, it, it is exactly the Hodge line bundle. So so basically you look at the relative dualizing, see if you know ideally just sort of push this forward and, and take determinant. Now it might not have sections, so you have to take a Take a power of it, push it forward, take the determinant, and it turns out that that's it. Uh, it is not an easy proof, so uh, yeah, as would you know, that's quite complicated. Okay, thank you, Yashkan.